across the floor, across the, you know, the hall, and into the, into the left on the first auditorium. Um, I'll give you some more directions about you know, lunch, which is going to happen um, right underneath us. And, uh, and if you need any more plugs, there's plenty of them here. All these tables have power underneath the main floor, underneath the main uh, par part of the table. So you can uh, feed your, your cable through it and connect underneath. If you need the connectors, just come in here. Uh, we're leaving you now with Miko Loretan, which is going to ta talk about suppressing ligatures, selectively suppressing ligatures. Thank you so much, and uh, thank you for the organizers uh, for inviting me and uh, for, uh, for doing a great job of organizing this conference. Is this on? Can you hear, can you hear me? Is it? Good. Um, so it's about, so that my talk is about a package called Cell No Lig, which does selective suppression uh, of uh, ligatures. And I feel a little bit weird because the, the main application of this package is really for German language documents. But if I give uh, this presentation in German, I will surely lose more than 90% of the participants. So, uh, so I'll give mostly uh, applications in English. And if you think that it's a little bit specialized and why even bother, well, indeed, it's not a very high priority item in, for English language documents, but it is actually quite a bit more important for German language documents. Um, all right. Um, by the way, um, I assume everyone recognizes this uh, little uh, thingy, uh, Java the Hut. And so some of you have asked you know, why I use an uh, image of Java as my avatar on tech, tech to stack exchange. Uh, well, I thought, you know, it's, it's um, you know, as, as I get older, every year I look more and more like my famous ancestor. So, I <laughs> so uh, that's uh, <laughs> what this is about. All right. Um, so the, I'm just going to show you some, uh, if you look at the first uh, four rows, right, so there's a whole bunch of uh, English language words and uh, they all are distinguished by the fact that they contain ligatures and, and in fact all of them should not have ligatures. And so let me just, right, so selfless half line, then here's FL, there's the FFL ligature, then there's the famous uh, shelf full, but also there's Actually, there is such a thing as a wolf fish, believe it or not. Uh, rooftop, halftime, off track. And then, uh, right, asp, heracle, uh, that might uh, c uh, cause some things. So there's one way to uh, uh, suppress this, which is with the uh, so-called babble method, uh, which just inserts a little bit of thin space between uh, uh, where you need to suppress it. It's a, and uh, notice that, um, so this is, and the amount of thin space inserted is everywhere the same. It turns out to be 0.03 EMs of uh, uh, white space. Um, and the, so, the, and so notice it's something like transport or aspherical that you get a little bit of a gap, an interword gap where it's probably not ideal, right? In other places, uh, you don't get enough of a gap in the sense that with this particular font, which is, happens to be a version of Garamond, um, you don't get uh, enough separation. Um, then this is the solution by the Selnolig package, which uh, at first looks very similar to the one by Babel. Uh, the main thing to consider is actually it, what it does is it does not insert any thin space, and so so transport aspherical hound's tooth right actually looks better. Um, but on the other hand. It might look marginally less good than the Babel method, but the advantage is that it is automated for you, which uh, I think people will recognize. And then at the very bottom, sorry, I didn't realize this for the people in the back, you might be hard pressed to see this. This is a kind of an experimental version. And so the reason I chose this version of Garamo is that it has a short arm version of F and FF. And so if you were to put that in, right, so I'm just transferring the first two lines because those are the problematic lines. Uh, you see that it has no unsightly interword gaps, but also, um, you know, it, it, all the ligatures are suppressed. Uh, so just uh, repeat, uh, just in case you're not aware what a typographic ligature is, it's a combination of two or more characters into a single glyph. Um, and some here are some common, so-called common ligatures, the, the basically the five uh, F, F, FF, FI, FL, FFI, and so on, and they're 
uh, italic versions. Then there's also, well, they're common, they must be rare ligatures. And I've given just from two particular fonts, uh, there's a whole bunch of them, and uh, including one. So I've never understood why somebody bothered to do the QY uh, ligature. I have no idea which language that comes, but it's, you know, it's kind of fancy, so uh, why not show it? All right, so the computer modern or Latin modern, which, which is, you know, everyone in tech uh, community is rather familiar with, it just has the five common ligatures, but other font families provide many, many more. And so this is just, you know, a small sample of all possible ligatures that have been invented. By the way, um, so if you think that this distinction between common, rare, historic, and so on is somewhat <coughs> suboptimal, I'm fully in agreement with you. I'm, uh, you know, so which fonts assign which um, uh, classification for various ligature combinations that's uh, you know, uh, somewhat of a topic for, I guess, an entirely different talk, but that's not my choice. Um, right, so then what, why in, in employ typographic ligatures? One is to avoid collisions of certain characters, right? That, for example, F and I, if you put it together just next to each other, uncurrent, you kind of, sometimes depending on the uh, font, right, you kind of get an unfortunate blob together, right, and so it's better just to have it uh, FI or say FJ, if I guess for people in Norway, if they talk about fjords, uh, the FJ <laughs> uh, character combination comes up quite often. I'm not sure if it happens very often in other languages, but uh, right, but also just uh, I'd argue, right, in addition to just enhancing legibility by avoiding these blobs, uh, right, I think there's also a matter of kind of an elegance, a refinement, uh, right, that just certain. F uh, that's part of the way that a font is supposed to look like, right? And so it makes it look good, but uh, so not always do you actually want the ligatures, right? And I'll sort of mention a case for where you actually don't want a certain ligature globally, right? Is, does anyone here speak Turkish or no Turkish? Uh, right, so there's, uh, Turkish has both a dotted and a dotless I character, and uh, so, and they obviously have a different meaning, right? And so if you were to use the FI ligature in the Turkish text, right, it's not clear whether this is a combination of F and the dotted I or dot, uh, F and the undotted I, and hence, right, so you would just suppress the FI ligature globally. And Turkish doesn't have much use for any other ligatures either, I right? should so probably just say, uh, um, right? However, so, and this is the topic of the talk, right, is selective ligature suppression. That So most of the time, we actually want the ligatures, but sometimes we don't want them, right? And, well, what is it, when do, when do we not want them? Well, the tech book, um, which actually, when I first became aware that it's possible to suppress ligatures, is from chapter five of the tech book. And it, but it only gives one example, this word, shelf full, uh, which, um, uh, right, and so this is the one with the, if you look closely, with the FF ligature, this is the one without the uh, FF ligature, and it's just at the margin you might argue that it's slightly easier to read, and I'll sort of t touch on what exactly it, it means to make it more readable, or why suppressing a ligature would make the word more readable, right? And so basically the, the main thing to think about is that Sometimes, right, words consist of morphemes. I'll say more about morphemes in a little while. And if a, mor if a, um, a ligature spans a morpheme boundary, then it might actually impede the legibility of the word. And so, so morphemes, again, are the word components that convey meaning, by the way. And so obviously I'm talking mostly about languages that use the Latin character set, right? I have little to say about you know, Chinese characters, for example. I guess are, every character is its own morpheme in a sense, um, right? So every meaningful word, don't ask what a meaningless word is, every meaningful word has to contain at least one morpheme, right? So composite words contain two or more morphemes. And so when people read, right, unless you're an absolute beginner, right, or if you've had kids and you sort of remember how they learn to read, uh, right, at first they sort of go character by character, but quickly, right, they somehow read character groups at a time, and they basically learn to read kind of morphemes by morphemes as to, to sort of uh, get these things, right? So these visual chunks, and these most important visual chunks are, in fact, the more if you just learn from a language, what are the morphemes, and then from there, right? Um, so a ligature, by virtue of combining two or more characters in a single glyph, 
right? By virtue of making it into a single glyph also tends to be perceived as a single entity. And so if you have a word that contains a ligature that spans a morpheme boundary, uh, readers might have to slow down and do double take in order to figure out what it is that they're reading, right? And um, so I don't think that you, we can be, have to worry too much that they will actually be misled or that they might not understand, right? But they'll have to slow down and that's considered, you know, suboptimal, right? So if you look at, for example, off the word offload with um, offload or even better here on the right, right? By making off and load two separate distinctive uh, chunks, right? Presumably, it's e ever so slightly easier to take into account to understand what uh, is being written, right? So there are various types of morphemes. Uh, the fundamental distinction is between a so-called free and a bound morpheme. A free morpheme can stand alone, right? So I'm giving here some examples, uh, uh, right? A free morpheme can combine to form. Free morphemes can be combined, right? So bookshelf, bookend, freestyle, leftover, etc., right? Would be uh, uh, t words that contain two morphemes, two free morphemes, right? But you can also, right, so bound morphemes are basically the ones that cannot occur as standalone words. And I'll give some examples later. So, but then we distinguish between so called derivational and inflectional morphemes. The derivational morphemes are the ones that are, that somehow modify the meaning of the main morpheme, the main free morpheme in some fundamental way. Right? For example, true versus untrue, right? So a negation or the opposite. Do and redo, right? So the re part, right, is not, cannot stand by itself, but it modifies the do, tonal or atonal, right? Uh, leaf, leaflet, right? So a diminutive form, for example. Or handful, hand and handful, right? So the full part is uh, here is, is a, a modifier that sort of gives it a size or counting measure. Here, of course, think of shelf and shelfful, right? Truth and truthful, right? So here, the full has a different sense, right? It changes the word from a noun to an adjective, right? So it's not so much the, the part here that's going on, right? It's not so much that it uh, makes the counting measure, but it's really just a kind of, a, at least in English, how to transform from a noun to an, adge to an adjective in this case. Quick or quickly, right? So to change from adjective to an adverb, for example, right? Those would be, and so the more durational morphemes, as you can see, can be either prefixes or suffixes to the main word. Inflectional morphemes typically signify a less fundamental change in meaning. For example, say plural for forms of words, right? Book, books, child, children, right? So the, these are suffixes that sort of change the counting from singular to plural, right? But this, the meaning itself is not changed. Or if you conjugate verbs, right, from walk to walks to walked, for example, right, those are examples of where the suffix, uh, right, you're still dealing with the same verb, that has still the same meaning, but it's now in the past tense instead of the present tense, right? Um, and so the basic rule for selective ligature suppression, and it comes mostly out of a German context, but it, I think it makes sense for other languages as well, Right, is you supp certainly suppress ligatures if the morpheme boundary spans two free morphemes or a free and a derivational morpheme, right? So off track, half time, half line, shelf full, right, would be all be cases where you're either having, say, two free morphemes stuck together or, you know, free and a derivational morpheme stuck together. On the other hand, right, you would typically not suppress a ligature if it spans a boundary between a free and an inflectional morpheme, uh, especially if this inflectional morpheme starts with the letter I, right? So in English, I could think of, say, fluffily, right? So fluff, fluffy, fluffily, right? So there's two, uh, the fluff versus fluffy, uh, right? So the oafish roofing, right? I think most people will not mistake this as a fish called O, uh, right? So, uh, so the, the likelihood that you will somehow mislead uh, people by having a, a Preserving the FI ligature is pretty low, uh, right? Um, right. And also, and frankly, probably this, uh, and even in German, right? If you think about like uh, the various words, Häufig and so on, right? So there actually, there is this boundary between Haufen and Ig, right? So there is, uh, but you basically by avoiding an unsightly FI co collision, right? In a typographic sense, you actually do more uh, good than harm, right? Because the harm of having this FI collision would somehow be detract again from the visual impact, visual uh, sense of the word. 
Right, so by the way, uh, so there's also some confusion about what are morpheme syllables, hyphenation points. So first of all, morphemes need not coincide with syllables. It's actually very important because syllables has related, is somewhat related to also uh, how do you separate words uh, in hyphenation methods, right? So morphemes, right, so some morphemes can contain more than one syllable, right? Apple, banana would be two uh, nouns that uh, cons uh, uh, contain a single thought, right, a single su subject, right, but they contain more than one uh, syllable, right. Correspondingly, you can have one syllable words that can contain two or even more morphemes, right, and so take the word fifths, right, say two fifths, three fifths, four fifths, right, so there is actually one free morpheme to five or the form of five. There is the th, which is a derivational morpheme that makes it to go from five to fifth, right, so it's a counting type. Um, or a fraction of five, and then the S, the inflectional morpheme that says you go from one fifth to two fifths, right? So again, so, so what I hopefully, sort of just what you want to remember is that morphemes and syllables need not coincide, right? Sometimes they'll coincide, right? True, dog, cat, see, or there's one syllable, one morpheme, but in general, the two are not the same. Also, morpheme boundaries do not coincide with hyphenation points, right? For example, I'm taking the word bananas, plural, right, and here I'm using a font that has this fancy AS ligature, uh, right, and um, so there is, so there is, obviously there is no, uh, there's a ligature, there is a morpheme boundary there between a main word and the inflectional morpheme S, right, but there is no uh, hyphenation point, I think, that anyone in their right mind would consider, right, and so and then, by the way, as a aside, right, I dis when I started thinking about doing this package, right, I basically didn't want, didn't want to tangle with anything related to hyphenation, right? So uh, hyphenation is a huge topic in its own right, and uh, I didn't want to do anything that then somehow comes back to bite people and says, well, you know, otherwise valid hyphenation points are, so, are no longer being found, right? So, um, so th there are various ways to suppress ligatures. The basic tech methods uh, are basically the, 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 to insert what's called an italic correction, to imp insert a kern, a zero width kern, or to insert an empty tech group. Um, the, as you probably know, or if you haven't, right, so the empty group method doesn't work in Lua tech, right? So it's very simple, very elegant. It doesn't work if you're using Lua tech. Um, the first and second methods insert what's called a kern. And so kerns are not, th um, one of the important things about kerns is that they're, they're not discarded ever, right? But it also means that basically hyphenation will no longer be performed at the, in the affected words, right? So if somehow you had a method that were to insert this kern zero PT where there's supposed to be a, a ligature suppression point, right? You actually lose the hyphenation, which somehow, uh, you know, probably might, might cause more trouble than is, uh, than is worth, right? And the uh, italic correction method might actually insert too much white space, right? It might actually sort of, um, so it's easy, obviously writing backslash forward slash is a lot easier than to write this here, right? But it, in fact, by inserting an italic correction, it might actually create more, insert more white space than is justified from a purely typographic point of view. Um, then other methods I'll mention importantly because uh, there's the Babel shortcut method. So basically double apostrophe and a vertical bar, right? So if you were to type in shelf apostrophe vertical bar full, right, then and run this through Babel with the suitable language option, mostly German option uh, and German, right? So this will insert a, it will make, break up the ligature at that point. Right, and importantly, the Babel method not only, as I think I already touched on at the very beginning, not only suppresses the ligature at that, in this case, an FF ligature, it also inserts a bit of white space. And as far as I can tell, um, where does the 0.03 EM come from? As far as I can tell, it comes from uh, computer modern, right? Computer modern has a fair F and double F has fairly short, well, not very short arms, but not very long arms either, right? And um, so you get full, so if you have an F and an L character that can be separated, then the Babel method will do it just fine, or the FF versus L, right? 
so the disadvantages, right, one is that the amount of white space inserted is quite suboptimal for other ligatures and uh, especially for other fonts. For example, right, if I, right, so this is shelf full, this is the, so two versions of sh shelf full, one with the current zero PT v form and the other, oh, I should have, uh, sorry, this is using the Babel separator, right? Notice how this here, sorry, the, it was nice and clear on my screen. It's not as, uh, sorry for that, right? So basically, it inserts actually more white space than is necessary so far to separate an FF ligature. You actually insert more white space than is really needed. And this also goes for FI uh, ligature points, right? It actually, in computer modern, you actually could get by with not inserting any white space at all, um, right? Um, on the other hand, right, if you were to take the word selfless, um, right, and again, sorry, I don't know how I missed this. So anyway, take the, you have to take my word for that. This one here is, um, right, so this is with the zero kern, which is also basically what, uh, um, Cell no leg does, right? It's F and L touch, but even with a bit of white space insert, they still touch, right? So it actually doesn't truly solve. If you are some uh, kind of a purist, uh, right, and you somehow think that, uh, lig uh, uh, that characters should never touch, right, then the Babel method actually doesn't fully work, um, right? And so, and there are plenty of taunts, right, so that are don't look like computer modern, which have, you know, look very good, but they have arms, Fs and double Fs that have arms that are fairly far <laughs> along to protrude to the right and hence tend to interfere with the, uh, the next character, especially if it's something like L or B or H or K, um, right? Another method is a so-called preprocessor-based approach, and some of you may have come across the RM legs package, uh, so I guess short for remove legs. <laughs> and so it's, it's an external Perl-based script that has to be run on the input document and outcomes, you know, a version of your LaTeX document that has all these apostrophe uh, pipe symbols thrown in where things, and so, uh, so you get lots of these, uh, so every time when it's f there's a word match, um, it has about a thousand words, and so literally, so the, the good part is that there is no type two error, right? So it doesn't suppress ligatures where it hasn't been defined, but there's a lot of type one error, so a lot of words that it misses where it should be suppressing ligatures, but in fact, it uh, doesn't do, do that, right? So the disadvantage is it's not integrated into LaTeX. It requires an external program, which may or may not be installed on a given computer system, and so I think it's fair to say that ARM ligs never took off, and uh, um, it's, uh, it's, it's difficult to extend. So because the way that it's set up, it's, you have to have, basically have to have one rule for every word, right? So there's a thousand words. And, um, and, but in fact, if you sort of were to look at it lexically, right, it should be possible to write about oh, 15 or 20 separate rules that would somehow summarize uh, the output for these 1,000 words, right? And so it seems uh, maybe that's also part of why it didn't take off, right? Because it's just so much work to try to keep track of this. Um, right, so another thing is that it's available for German language documents, really, but it's not, this, the method in the ARM Linux package is not really easy to extend to other languages, say English or whatever. Uh, so a wish list then would be, one, it should be integrated with tech or LaTeX. There should be no need for external programs, right? And basically this means we have to use Lua tech because there is no, uh, because the paragraph building algorithm on basic tech or old tech doesn't allow kind of this automated uh, intrusion into the system to find where are their FL or FI cases that should be suppressed, um, right? A nice thing would be that basically people should just be able to write their document and not have to worry about cluttering up their document with uh, these uh, Babel type shortcuts, right? The same way that, right, we shouldn't have to worry about where to provide hyphenation points or potential, right? So somehow the program itself should be able to hi handle hyphenation, so it should be handle lig ligature suppression, right? It should be impossible, at least if possible, should be available for more than one language. It should be easy to make people to add their own ligature suppression rules, right? They might have specialized words that I didn't think of, and uh, right, or that, or they might find that they have special needs for uh, for allowing a ligature, even though cell no lig is set up to actually suppress ligatures and so on. 
uh, right? And then it would also be nice to, if, to extend this to beyond just the common ligatures. RM ligs is it only for the common ligatures. But you know, we have all these nice fonts that have all these uh, so-called rare discretionary ligatures. How about that? And some, not so, some of these are not so rare nowadays, right? FT and FFT in particular, um, right? And the and so, and, uh, and as, as an aside, by the way, the package also provides some extra. As I was providing this, I came across that, uh, that Babel uh, and Polyglossia, their uh, hyphenation rules, somehow don't often treat uh, words with ligatures very well. So I ha added a whole bunch of extra hyphenation exceptions. Right, so the Selenolig package hopefully so, sort of addresses all of these points in the wish list. Right, so it uses the Lua tech, um, Lua tech, and in particular the so-called ligaturing callback. Right, so Lua tech provides all kinds of callbacks to open up various parts of the paragraph building algorithm, and so the ligaturing callback is ideal for at least for this when I first designed this. Right, because the ligaturing callback happens after all tech. Uh, Macros have been fully expanded, right? So you don't have to worry about, you know, what, suppose that you had a, a macro called off track, right? And it would be fatal, right, if somehow the off track, oh, you know, off, you know, do something, insert a what's it or whatever track, right? That, that's going to crash the program. And so I don't want to, you know, to interfere with people's imagination for what uh, uh, permissible high, uh, macro names should be. Um, so this uh, started uh, just as a kind of a way as a side, right? So I, about six years, seven years ago, I posted a query to tech.se and uh, Patrick Gundlach, Taco Hukwater came up with some uh, initial things that I then had to uh, so somewhat I modified myself, but then there's some two Cracker Jack programmers uh, that helped me some more, right? For example, somebody asked earlier about Unicode and so, Indeed, right, so there's things like string.gsub occur, which doesn't work well with uh, UTF-8, right? So, but Stefan then actually just kind of wrote some low-level code that just crawls over the input data and just uh, knows how to keep track of these things, and very nice, um, right? So it does not affect other paragraph building tasks, such as, in particular, the hyphenation algorithm. Uh, right, so especially I don't want to, I didn't want to make the package depend on you know, whether you use Babel or Polyglossia, right? That's I, sh I, I don't think I should be interfering with other uh, user things, right? So and also right, so shelf full, right? The word should be hyphenatable at that point, right? And I don't want to do anything that um, somehow suppresses the ability to hyphenate the word. Um, Right, so it, it does it for more than one language at the moment. It's for two languages, but uh, in principle could be, uh, I guess, extended just about any language for which high uh, ligature suppression is of any relevance. Um, right, so for English, actually, I do both common and various rare ligatures. Right, you saw the aspherical, for example, as a right where somehow the asp is a kind of a snake, right, and asp heracle that probably people will have to. to double and triple take before they sort of, oh, you know, uh, the, the SP ligature is not helpful, right? Uh, for German language rules so far, I'm only doing it for the five common ligatures. Basically, right, so German, as uh, the German speakers here know, right, before 1900 or before 1930, really, right, used the various uh, forms of Gothic script anyway for which that other ligatures, but not really anything with the, so, so to use rare ligatures in a German document for me would be some kind of weird anachronism. So if you want to do it, you're on your own. And so it's, uh, but you know, the, the basic 5F ligatures should definitely be treated by the way. So just, I mean, the, the main, for the English language part, for, the, for just the common ligatures, I have about 15 rules that cover all the cases I was able to come up with for, the, basically I have 20 times as many rules for German as for English, right? So that's, again, because there's much more need in German than in English to, to deal with this. Um, so there are four types of user, or several user macros. First, the most important one is no lig, which is sets up what I'll call a ligature suppression rule, right? And for example, you might think, so lo, no lig, so whenever it uh, sees this uh, thing in the input stream, right, it, well, it, when it sees, sees this, it inserts a so-called what's it during the 
ligaturing uh, callback that suppresses the formation of a ligature at that point. Uh, the nice thing about using the ligaturing callback is that at the end, uh, you know, the input is re returned as is, right? So there's nothing left over that will then later on interfere uh, with it, right? And so, inter so shelf full, shelf fulls, right? Two shelf fulls of book about tech, for example, right? But also the word self-fulfilling um, will also fe fe feature, right? So where you would sort of think that if I were using a double F ligature here, right, I would probably not enhance the legibility of the word, right, and can't, uh, right, similar, right, so for the sim simple rule F-like to F, you know, where is the bar like, right, uh, right, it, it actually, right, a whole bunch of, right, so one rule can basically capture all kinds of words. It doesn't, I don't have to have one rule for every single possible word, which, you know, um, right, so then, by the way, this can also be used to perform global ligature, uh, right? For example, some fonts have an FK ligature, and as far as I can tell, there's no German language word, or for that matter, English language word, that has uh, you know, any, a real need for this FK ligature, uh, right? So the, this package has, for both languages, has this rule, right, that basically suppresses this ligature for all cases. However, of course, uh, well, there are some non-German or non-English uh, words that, in fact, do have a use for the FK, right? So, uh, this uh, um, one of the people who was working with me on this an early version of the package, he was apparently a Kafka fan, and so he thought it was very important to, so, to keep the FK ligature, ligature for certain words such as Kafka, uh, right? Um, uh, Felix can sort of explain why he was so obsessed with the word Kafka, but that's a different matter. Um, so, right, so the nice thing is so that for every, so you can actually over, overrule no lig rules with uh, keep lig rules, right? So that actually makes it very easy. Much, instead of having, say, you know, 50 different rules uh, to word Pflicht, which is German for uh, duty or uh, task, right? Um, then I could actually have about like four rules plus two keep, re keep leg rules, and so it makes, makes it much easier to keep track of the total. Um, the, then another one, so besides the two main, so the previous, sorry, the two main rules for the document wide are no leg and keep leg. Um, uh, then those are meant to be on a document wide basis, right? but sometimes you might need to override. Uh, either the no leg or keep leg rules, right? So the way to that use leg basically re enables a rule, a ligature that would otherwise be suppressed, right? And so indeed, so it's, you might think, well, why would you need that? Uh, well, partly is that if you're actually the writer of, an auth of the documentation of the cell and leg package, right, you need to occasionally show what the ligature would look like, the inappropriate ligature would look like. So you actually need to override. Uh, so use leg and break leg, basically, break leg is shorthand for a discretionary hyphen and h space zero pt so that actually breaks the ligature and but allows hyphenation and maybe break leg is easier to remember than backslash hyphen backslash h space zero t pt right um, and then there's some other housekeeping things for example so by default it's on all the time right but sometimes you need to suppress it for example if you have say a long uh, um, you know, um, uh, long appendix with all kinds of words, and you don't want to have the package run, right? So cell no leg off just turns off the entire, basically it removes the main Lua function from the callback. That's what it does. Then also if you want to have either more or less information written to the log file, you can do this with debug on and debug off. Some selective aspects. Uh, so basically I started thinking of, uh, sort of for a long time, for many years, um, I, I think I first came across the tech book in 1991, and so I read this in chapter five about various methods for su suppressing um, ligatures. And because I'm sort of a German language background, I said, oh yeah, this would be uh, quite useful for, um, right? So um, then I sort of posted a query to uh, comp.text.tech about eight years ago, and somebody said, well, I asked about can this be done in some automated way, it says, well, you have to use Lua tech, right? So I started think, looking into that, and back then I still had bar, bar, barely under, any understanding of Lua, uh, 
right? So, but then, you know, as I mentioned, some people have very kindly responded to a help call in the form of a uh, posting to tech.se. Um, but once the Lua code was in place, basically, right, it still took several months of uh, hard work with uh, uh, Felix and Stefan to basically come up with the main structure of no lig and keep lig rules for the German language case. The English language case took me about two, two weeks for German. It, uh, so I, again, I started off the English language rules. Then I st started tackling the RM Lig's package, about a thousand words, and I figured out that you could condense it into about uh, 10 no leg rules and the two keep leg rules, right? So that was okay, making some progress. Then I came across a different package from a guy named Matthias Vogel, and he had about 7,000 words. And so uh, then it took, or six, well, I think it's seven under 5,000. Anyway, so that took me several weeks, but it's again, you know, kind of figured out and I kind of learned by myself how to make use of this uh, use leg. Uh, and then uh, basically, so these. Uh, so Felix, um, uh, his uh, handle on tech.se, by the way, is Don Cherry. Uh, don't ask why uh, he chose that, but a different story, right? So they came up with a corpus of 462,000 words uh, with containing various F ligatures. Uh, and, so, and some of them you know, should be suppressed, right? But importantly, right, you, don't, right, you want to suppress the F ligatures if they're inappropriate. You don't want to suppress them if they are appropriate, right? So there's, you have to avoid both type 1 errors and type 2 errors in order to do a good job, uh, right? And so, and so the nice thing is that they had this, this 462,000 words were all marked up with a special tool, software tool, with morph morphological information so that you actually have what are the morphemes, what are the morpheme boundaries, and where, um, you know, should you not have an F ligature. Uh, so when they first applied this to the initial version of the Selenolig package, right, so it was, well, the good news it was 85% correct. The, the <laughs> downside was that it had um, about 69,000 errors, uh, right? But in fact, it's, you, do, you want some tool like that at an early stage, right, because that's when you want to, yes? Uh -huh. Right, and so, and then, th th actually, then it's, or if it turns out right, then that's when actually Stefan um, came up with the code to have the keep leg rule because then all the words related to Pflicht uh, somehow were captured by that, and it went one fell swoop, about 12,000 uh, errors were type two errors were removed. Right, so that's uh, right when the power of having these automated tools uh, really shines. Now there's some unfinished business, frankly, right? And uh, so one is, right, so again, ideally, or at least what you read somehow when you read about this, right, is that after ligature suppression, right, the adjoining glyphs should not touch at all, right? That's sort of, uh, um, right? And this is for not a problem for most ligatures, including all rare ligatures, right? If you take the CT and you break it up into, you know, right? If, if, if you suppress the CT ligature, you just have C and T and they don't touch and that's it, that's great, right? But what about the FL and the FL, FFL cases, right? Those are where you, where in fact, right? Uh, for somehow, my experience is with most fonts kerning tables, right? You might think that, gee, right, I mean, just uh, right, the font should handle the case where if there's an F and an L, the kerning table should take care of providing whatever it takes to have these two glyphs not touch. Well, my impression is that font designers basically assume that there won't be any uh, uh, adjoining F and L ligatures, or F and L characters, because they will be combined into an FL ligature, and you sort of dealt with the problem that way, right? So. Um, Right, so the right, so they somehow they assume that these FL and FFL cases will not occur in the wild, right? Because they will be replaced by their corresponding ligatures, right? So the Babel method is adequate for these FFL and FL cases for a computer modern or Latin modern, right? It's not good, really good enough for other uh, fonts. Um, so the right, because well, what about inserting even more space, right? So here. I've just by hand, it turns out that if you insert uh, 0 0.011 EMs, almost four times as much as what uh, Babel is set to the program to insert, right? You indeed get the case where the glyphs just, the characters don't touch at all, right? Uh, so the downside is that you have these very unsightly inter word gaps, right? And so you've replaced one problem with a pr problem that's probably even worse uh, or much worse. 
uh, right? So much better would be to employ what I call the short armed versions of F and FF, right? And so if available, right? And so this is what I was showing you earlier and showing you again, right? So some fonts, especially EB Garamond and um, uh, also Lim Linux Libertine, they provide these what I call the short arm versions of the glyphs, right? And if you can somehow do that, right, then in some sense you're getting the best of both worlds because, uh, right, you just, and you can sort of program it that in such a way that the short arm version of F that the, that the hyphenation algorithm thinks of it as just the same as an ordinary F, long-armed F, and hence that it doesn't you know, barf at, uh, during, the, uh, during the hyphenation part. Right? So sadly, only very few fonts provide short-armed versions. As I mentioned, I'm only aware of two. Right? And I'm thinking of just even for these two, right, if people are so inclined right, that they at least can get the best of both worlds, but it's something still to be done. Um, right? And alternatively, and frankly, I think it's not a bad uh, choice, is basically employ a font where the F and FF glyphs have very short arms to begin with. And that way, no collisions can ever occur if you have a trailing B, H, I, J, K, L glyph, right? And there's an example of such a font is Palatino, which is rather well known, but there's also uh, there's some other ni nice fonts, really good high quality fonts that have the short arm things. And basically here, I showed with the, with the, with the uh, ligatures, here is with the, without the ligatures, and basically they look the same. And by the way, right, so this is for Taos Palatino, and if you look carefully, right, that even F and H, right, they still touch. So, so sometimes, right, these ayatollahs who sort of proclaim that after ligature suppression, the glyphs must absolutely not touch, right, uh, apparently it's up, apparently was not as, uh, um, you know, committed to, you know, the, tr the true message or whatever you want to call it, uh, right? So if it's good enough for Zapf, it probably should be good enough for other uh, German language uh, documents as well. Um, yeah, so this is an overview, and so if you have questions, let me know. Questions? It's uh, it's, it's, each language is complicated, it's some, uh, but as uh, Tolstoy would say, right, each language is complicated in its own ways. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or if you miss out so much complication. <laughs> yeah. Ah, so the question, yeah. sorry, hold on, let me just answer this one quickly. Yeah, sure. so, so the question is like, say, F, I, right, so put F and then I in a group. So indeed it works in um, plain tech, but Lua tech for design reasons that I'm not familiar with, uh, I'm sure Hans uh, or so could give a better <coughs> answer, but basically these things, these, uh, these grouping things are discarded if they're not needed, and so, uh, so. Point out, even. Oh, sorry. Even in even in Pascal's uh, text, you can the the, the grouping the spread doesn't necessarily work depending on imagination. So. That's right. So, so, so yeah. So this empty group method, uh, even under in plain classical tech, doesn't work. Yes. Okay. So this isn't really a question, but another comment. There's another situation where you need to suppress the ligatures, and that's to do with what I'll be talking about this afternoon, um, accessibility, where you need to replace the ligatures with a Unicode translation. And only six of those, we've seen dozens of ligatures here, but only six of them actually have Unicode points. So it's more about what are the actual names of the glyphs in the fonts of those characters, and then having a glyph to Unicode map for those named glyphs. And so I'd be interested in having a, a okay. list of the glyphs that are actually, that you've actually I, I can give only a, a partial answer to that. Yeah. So in, indeed, uh, for various reasons, uh, Unicode, uh, most glyphs are often the so-called uh, private use area exactly. of the and font that, and families. Totally and so where they occur is more or less uh, uh, a random choice by the font designer. And yeah. so... Uh, Which is why we need to know the glyph name and then you have a mapping from the and name. So, and, yeah, and sometimes you have like F underscore T yes. is the name for the FT yeah. yes. uh, ligature, but it's not entirely uh, standard either. So yeah. I've, I've seen exceptions. Most of the time it works, but there are 
also, right, so there's, say, an FT. There might be more than one version of the FT right. uh, um, ligature, and then you might have one FT, but then you might have other FT ligature forms, and so yeah. it's a, it's yeah. a, it's a und, undis, undis, yeah, it's still. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, as mm -hmm. a, as a kind of request, mm -hmm. I would love to get a list of all of the names of the things that you have encountered, and then we will make sure we do okay. something with that. Let's let's talk. Okay, uh, yo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, just to reply to that comment, I think that actually what you want to do is to replace the ligature with two codes in the accessibility mode. Oh, yeah. So that's it, right? Yeah, yeah. But you need to do this sort of like before you have the glyph, right? You need to have, to have it in the yeah. input. So that's the difficult part, I suppose. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I see Will here. Yes. Thank you for the, for the um, fascinating talk. I never, I, I knew of your package and I never fully appreciated its utility. Um, my question is around the, uh, my assumption is that the ligaturing callback happens in the font shaping um, subsystem essentially, because the ligatures are font specific of course. Yes. So mm -hmm. can your package, uh, are, are these ligature, is this ligature control able to be applied for different fonts separately? Let's say you have a German part of your text which is in one font and an English part of your text in another font and um, you just say, oh, this is the German font, this is the English font and it does that all. Well, so um, I thought about that and so as far as I know of all the, there's, uh, of there's hardly any overlap between the two sets of rules there. I guess I came up with the word Mondflesserl, which is a kind of um, a baked good <laughs> with poppy seeds, and so it would uh, inf it, it, it somehow the FL ligature is fine in German, but would some English rule would catch it. But so, uh, but other than people who write about Mondflesserls, I'm <laughs> I'm I'm so that, at least that part I'm I'm, I'm pretty confident is not uh, going to cause any problems. Mm. But so at the moment, mm -hmm. it's, it's for the whole document, not for... But that's right. So it's, that's right. So I, I guess I could add a system where, right? So I mean, I, you can sort of specify German rules or English rules or both for that matter, mm -hmm. right? Again, because there's hardly any overlap apart from that uh, somewhat unusual word, uncommon word, right? But you can, uh, right? So again, I guess I was thinking that most of the time people write either in English or in German, but not both. But in principle, right, it would be nice to have that. And yes, you could... I guess it wouldn't be too hard to throw out the, um, to somehow delete the entire table of, uh, right? Uh, I guess it would have what I have to do using, you know, some of the, so I would have to use a Lua table. Uh, right now it's just uh, basically a whole bunch of uh, an unordered list of uh, rules, right? I could put these rules into a table and then just wipe out the table. That would probably be the, the clean way to put it to it. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.